today on Community Cooking. We have guest chef Debbie Bernstein back in the kitchen, whipping up a tasty vegetarian menu, starting with a black bean avocado salsa, vegetarian mini tostadas with quinoa, and a mini peach cobbler. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community, so grab a chair and get comfortable. We have another great meal. This is your Community Cooking. Welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Maria Prekages, and I always like to have this lady next to me in the kitchen, Debbie Bernstein. I love it when you're here. Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So your stuff is always so easy because you know me so well. It's always <laughs> flavorful. And today it's vegetarian? It is vegetarian. I didn't think we did that, but we do. <laughs> uh, one of my daughters has decided that she is a partial vegetarian because there's a a special burger chain that she won't give up so she's <laughs> keeping that but <laughs> oh, that is awesome actually my niece did that and she accidentally ate a beef burger once and couldn't understand why it was so delicious <laughs> my brother he's like it's because it's beef but no good for her so you've always loved being in the kitchen and your family you've always you know just not accommodated but seen what they like and then you create from there Right, right. I, I think it's it's two-sided. Number one, it's nice for them to like what they're eating, but I feel a lot better when they tell me how great everything is. So if I make something they're not going to like, what's the point? Well, yeah. And we always talk about you have to experiment, and sometimes those don't always. I bet you're about an 85 90% though at what they like. Pretty much. Pretty much. Because you have the gift. <laughs> you do. Not everyone does. Case in point, me. But people like you teach me, we teach everyone. Um, so vegetarian, and we're going to start with dessert first. The best place to start. Very French of you. Uh, <laughs> with a peach cobbler, mini peach right. cobbler. Right. It's, it's kind of a, a cross between a cupcake and a peach cobbler. Oh, I love it. And I love that you put it in cupcake tins because then it's right. mini and you don't feel like you're eating very much. Right. So go over all the ingredients for me first, please. So this is the most simple thing you'll ever make. And it, once you make one of these, it'll be, why do I buy box mixes when I can do this? It's sugar, flour, um, melted butter, cinnamon, and brown sugar to put on the top, milk. Mm -hmm. We've got um, caramel that we're going to drizzle on it as well. Oh. We've got baking powder. <laughs> They and, do different things, but I'm always and like vanilla. Or soda. <laughs> and then, of course, some peaches. And the peaches, yes. My father loved his canned peaches, let yes. me tell you. And, and can you use fresh or canned? Th that's what's hard for me. I'm not a canned peach kind of person, but it doesn't work with fresh fruit. Really? Interesting. Not. But they're pretty much drained. They are. And I like the peaches in water, not the... Not the um, uh, it's more watery, or it's juice not, now. And not, right. What am I the trying to say? The juice instead of the corn syrup. Yes, thank yeah. you. Help, help girl out. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. And I don't see, I mean, you have great cupcake liners, which are always fun. I, that, that's kind of my thing. I love cupcake <laughs> liners. <laughs> I only I use quirky things. <laughs> when we do baklava, and you've, it's easier to serve in a liner because it's so, you know, syrupy, right. but those are fun. So you're going to teach me how to make baklava one day. One day we will. It's a long process. But so back to our easy peach cobbler. So you ready? Yeah. I know so you're going to dump it all in and go, that's it. We are. So we're just really going to put everything in one bowl. And I find it's so, I mean, this looks great presentation, of course, for television, but it's so easy to measure everything out first. I always do when I cook. Yeah. And does it matter? Doesn't matter what. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you put it what in. What order you put it in? Or just if I, I can have the vanilla, please. Vanilla. I love vanilla. I do too. And splurge and get real vanilla. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's worth it. And you don't need like you don't a use so you use so yeah. little. And then the baking powder. The baking powder. And this I could just go drink. Let and me that, just tell you. We're not using that till the end though. I know, but oh, who needs a cocktail when you have caramel? So that's it. We're just going to whisk it up and it's done. That's how easy these are. So you save the peaches we're gonna put, after you whisk that. As we assemble, okay. we're going to put the peaches. And what's going to happen is we're going to layer butter, then batter, then peaches. Butter, then batter. <laughs> yeah, it's like a song. Oh, it my. Is. Oh, my. <laughs> butter, and so you're just going to layer it and up. And then as it bakes, the peaches actually kind of sink into the middle. 
So there's oh, so kind of a pastry all around it with peach in the center. Well, and you love being in the kitchen. Besides trying new things and getting your family on board and experimenting, why the kitchen? I mean, some people like taking walks. I mean, I know you're totally into biking these days, which is awesome. <laughs> Love yeah. it. But why in the kitchen? I, I th I'm not good at sitting still. I need to be doing something with my hands. And I think that I just found that if I'm in the kitchen cooking, then at the end, my family has a meal. So it's, it's keeping me busy and making them happy at the end. So I think that's kind of how it started. And plus in the kitchen, everyone really just leaves me alone because they know that food's coming later. <laughs> so. The real reason. We're getting down to it. So but no, is... people like their alone time. But when you have a family, you don't get a lot of alone time. No. No. And there's times that I have the girls in the kitchen with me. And, you know, now that we're empty nesters and they each have their own homes, I have so much fun seeing them texting pictures back and forth of the meals they're making at their houses. Well, they learn from so. one of the best. <laughs> now, did your mom like cooking? My mom is <laughs> incredibly artistic, but cooking was not something she did a lot of. Because usually, like, I had my great grandparents and they would be in the kitchen all day cooking and, you know, flour flying everywhere. So a lot of times it's because you came from a family that cooked. Yeah, now my, my grandparents owned a coffee shop. So my grandmother cooked and my dad flips the best burgers um, from working in the coffee shop. But growing up, cooking was just not my mom's thing. She yeah. makes a really great meatloaf and a great mac and cheese and those are kind of her two staples. <laughs> Isn't, uh, we thought, you know, my mother was Greek. She made all these Greek dishes and we thought back, we're like, she made a handful. And that's, you know, I even sometimes make a handful, but it's good to be around folks like you because you experiment and that's such a key part of mm -hmm. being in the kitchen. It is, it is, and having fun. And sometimes I follow a recipe, but most times not. I know, see, and when I follow a recipe, I'm like, okay, one even teaspoon, and it's like, it's okay. I mean, sometimes with baking, like the baking powder, you need to have it a certain way. Or, right. But no, I so. think that's what I learned from you, which is so awesome. I'm gonna switch sides here. Okay, these are the cutest. So, and the nice thing, the reason I get these is because they're very sturdy. Yeah, the, with the and they foil bake line. evenly because of the foil inside. Oh, is so, that why they do that? Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? I don't know if that's why they do it, but it's a perk. Yeah. So we're just going to put a little bit of butter into the bottom of each, and what this is going to do is it's going to crisp up the bottom. So rather mm -hmm. than it being like a cupcake, it's going to be a little more like a tart. Sign me up. And you're just putting about a teaspoon of butter yeah. in each of them to to cover it. Oh yeah, melted butter. How can you go wrong with that? Right. Can we like, I can't believe you just mixed it and we're ready to put it together and you're already putting it together. Anytime I can make something that you don't have to use the mixer and then clean the mixer and... You're big on one bowl, what, like you've made things in the food processor and that's, you know, you, you dollop and serve it out of there. So now we're just going to put a couple spoonfuls of the batter, the batter on the butter. I love, that is a song. It's going to be our... Oops, oops, batter on the butter. I won't go any further, I promise. <laughs> but you will. You're going to be singing that tonight. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the batter on the butter, not the butter on the batter. You're going to be, why am I singing this Chris song? Chris up the bottom, and I have nothing that rhymes with that. We'll think of something, though, by the time we're into the show. It's sad that nothing rhymes with, what rhymes with bottom? I know. That's a bad word. <laughs> it's like orange. <laughs> nothing. So it crisps it up on the crisps it up on the bottom, but it also gives it a little butter inside too. Right, because remember we didn't put any fat or oil in the yeah. batter at all. That's why you put the batter on the butter. <laughs> Sorry, I love that. It's good. You have fun cooking. It's not only relaxing to you and almost therapeutic to a lot of people, but it's fun and it should it be. It is. I like to cook. You know, John comes in, he's like, what can I do? I'm like, sit on the other side and tell me how your date was. <laughs> other side of the bar and other Glass side of, of the wine. kitchen. Glass of wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the most relaxing part. I mean, so easy. I love it. And this is a year-round type of dessert. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? I haven't tried it yet, but I'm betting that you can put enough luck let's make another one. Oh yeah i'm betting that you could put different canned fruit well i was gonna ask like what pear pears pears would be, be good. good i would say peaches and pears maybe not pineapple too watery I'm might to be think. yeah but i would do but peaches i wonder and, and i've never tried it but now i want to i wonder if you used pie filling so um. like you could do strawberry or blueberry so we're just gonna put 
a and good size spoonful of peaches right on top. It just fills it right up. And like you said, when it bakes, it kind of goes a little towards the bottom, but then you'll still, I bet, have some on top. Um, most of them will be in the middle. Okay. But we're going to add something on the top so the top looks pretty too. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I'm giving you the caramel. <laughs> That's not going yet. <laughs> okay. The caramel is after. After they've baked, we top them with whipped drizzle. cream and caramel. So if we lost this and didn't drizzle it, it'd be okay. Wink, wink. <laughs> and so, yeah, you definitely want the peaches drained or take the whatever. I can't believe bit that is. I actually almost gauge that perfectly. Perfect. Well, of course. Hello. And, <laughs> and then we're going to sprinkle some brown sugar on each of them, and that's what's going to give them a little bit of crisp on the top, too. And, you know, for a dessert, a little teaspoon of butter, a little bit of sugar, but not super heavy by any no. means. And I like these. My sister makes a great peach cobbler. Actually, she makes, um, instead of the whole cobbler, she just throws it all in a pan. But this is nice. I like individual servings. Yeah, and you can um, totally make this instead of vegetarian. It could be vegan. You can use almond milk and use margarine okay. instead of butter. Okay. I love if that. If you want to go that extreme. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I don't. You make a lot of great fish dishes. You make a lot of great stuff. But this is as vegetarian as I need to go. I kind of feel like I couldn't give up cheese. I think that would be the hardest thing for me. Yeah, I and should I give just... up cheese because I eat a lot of it. But yeah, I think that would be very hard. But I respect people for, you know, doing it no matter if it's for weight or for, you know, whatever reasons. It's their deal. But it's nice to have an option that's vegetarian and that, that can go vegan as well. So that's it. So just easy. Pop them in the oven for 20 minutes and they're done. All right. Well, I'm going to pop these in the oven, but we're going to um, go to a quick break. When we come back, there's lots of good stuff behind this. There is. And I love, wait till you see these taco shells. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Community Cooking. Alexa, how do you tell if asparagus is still good? If it's not moldy or slimy, it's okay to eat. Enable the new skill from Save the Food on your Amazon Alexa and help fight food waste. Welcome back to Community Cooking. If you're just joining us, I'm your host, Maria Prekicis, and we have guest chef and my friend, Debbie Bernstein, with us. And it's all vegetarian today. It is. We just put some mini uh, peach cobblers in the oven. Yes. I almost said quinoa because I'm looking at it. That, <laughs> that probably wouldn't work. And no. now we're going to do a black bean salsa and some quinoa vegetarian tacos. Yes. Yum. Yes. Yum, really yum. Good. So should we start with the salsa? Again, Let's you always salsa bring first. simple, simple not a lot of ingredients. Go over them. Um, the salsa, this is so super simple. And this was actually because I had bought a case of black beans at one of the big box stores. And I was like, what can I make with black beans? And I was going to a party and I had to bring something. So I'm like, let me try to make a dip. And I just threw everything together. And See, this is how we all need to prepare and cook. So the moral of the story is, is buy stuff at the big box store. Oh my God. Yeah, we, now would you ever make it, this is a weird question, we tend to like in our Mexican food pinto beans now instead of black. That probably be really good. Yeah, it's just a different. Sometimes I like to. I like pinto I get, beans. Yeah, well. so or you could do a mix. But anyway, you could. We have your black beans. Your black beans. We have whatever your favorite salsa is. If you want to get fancy, you can make your own salsa. That's something I've never done, so I should try that sometime. Yeah, I can't believe that you make um, everything, but av good. Avocado. We're gonna cube into it, and then. You're not going to believe these words coming out of my mouth. <laughs> no, but I'm we're like, gonna, we're going to top it with some cilantro. <laughs> yeah, I don't think all the times you've been here, we've ever used cilantro, and it's one of my favorites. I like cilantro as well, but I have my husband and my daughter that won't even eat at a table that has cilantro <laughs> on it. God, that's so fun. <laughs> She's like, I just don't cook with cilantro. Yeah. I'm like, what? I love it. So I appreciate it. So today we're having cilantro instead yeah. of garlic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So this is so simple that I kind of don't want to do this with you today because. I can't ever bring it to a party again now. I know, your secret is out. So we start with black beans. They're drained, but they're not rinsed. Oh, okay. Does that add a little more flavor? Yeah, and it, okay. it helps to add just a little depth to it. Yeah. And I mean, this is how simple this really is. And I love canned salsa. I mean, I've made guacamole before, but I use canned salsa in the guacamole. Me too. Me too. Someone else, I figure, you know, if someone else had the recipe down. Why not just go with them? And, and I'm, a, I'm a salsa snob. 
So <laughs> well, I can buy whatever's cheapest. Yeah. Well, no, I'm I'm good with that. But if I'm at a restaurant, if it doesn't have good salsa, I don't go back to that restaurant. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> the chips were great, salsa not so much. And so, look, there's cilantro. We'll do the cilantro last, but we're gonna do the avocado. And I hate cutting avocados. Makes me nervous. Okay, it's salsa on my thumb. I'm not bleeding. Okay, good. <laughs> it's just the salsa, people. So let's see this one. I cut a little more even. So let's see if I can do this. Oh, see, I have almost slide. There's. We always talk about it. There's a deal in the emergency room called avocado wrist. <laughs> so be very careful. I've heard you can use a teaspoon, but every time I try it, it takes too long. So I was going to say, I have a really good idea. Do you want to try? Yeah, no. <laughs> So Excuse I like me. to slice it right in the skin. It's just so much easier. And then if you just scoop it out, it's all cubed already. Well, and you can use a butter knife to scoop inside if you're worried about knives, but you can do it. Just be careful. So you can, and avocados down here at the farmer's market are so yummy. So yummy. I love it. See, just, I, if you're patient in the kitchen, which I'm sure you are, me not so much, you will never cut yourself. <laughs> that's, my, that's my tip of the day. Be patient, unlike myself. So that's how easy it is. I love it. And how funny. See, sorry all your friends that she takes her uh, yeah, now black I'm gonna, bean dip to Now I'm going to need a new go-to because <laughs> this is just not going to be it. But I would think, you know, I mean, a lot of times when I'm at a restaurant and I have beans on my plate, I'll scoop them up with some cheese sometimes or what, and salsa, so it makes sense. Right, right. One of my daughters at Mexican restaurants only gets beans and rice and eats with chips. That's her meal. Yeah, so why not put it in a dip, in a salsa? So, so now we've got it all in the bowl, and it looks pretty, and it's colorful, but it still kind of looks like it came out of a jar. Yeah. And so you know what I like to do. You like to make it look like it didn't come out of a jar. Which this one did. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so we're going to... And you're not picking off the cilantro leaves. You're yeah. just rolling it up and chopping well, it. Well, we cut the end, so yeah. there's not. But sometimes I go like every leaf and it's like, really? Do you really? Oh, yeah, I'm silly sometimes. So like I should pull this little stem out to make you happy then? No, I mean, people, a lot of people just cut them all up. And then with this, I wouldn't even mix it in. Oh, just put it on top. Oh, perfect. I love it. And black beans are good for you. They are. Any vegetarian, you know, does take some of the calories out, and but you still get your protein. So we're done. Okay, well, that one's easy. All right, I'm moving in your other ingredients. How do you like that? I'll take the scrappies. All right, so for the vegetarian tacos. And again, another super simple dish. Okay, I just have to say, can we look at these? I'll eat this one because my hands have been on it. Aren't they cute? Those are so cute. And as I was driving here this morning, I was thinking how great those would be if you like threw them in the oven and let them get just a little crisp oh, yeah. before you use them or the air fryer like we were talking about. That is They'd awesome. Be perfect. All right, so, so tell me ingredients. So the ingredients, I don't know what that is. that's hominy, oh, yeah. which is just a type of corn. Okay. So we've got hominy, we've got black beans. Um, this is quinoa before it's cooked. Okay. So it's just a grain. I'm familiar with quinoa. We've got lime juice, we've got salsa that we're gonna use to garnish. We have agave again. We have a little bit of grapeseed oil. And our spice we're using is cumin. See, I put, I call it cumin, but it's cumin. really cumin. Which one is it? Maybe I'm uh, saying it No, wrong. I think you're right. But <laughs> whenever I do beans, when we have taco night, I put cumin in it all the time. And okay. people are like, what's that spice? I, I was like, I don't know where it came from in my life, but it's really yummy. So just to show, again, we're going for the easy. And we're going to even use a spoon with some salsa on it because it oh, doesn't yeah, matter, it's all, right? And quinoa... I think with just water is a little boring, personally. But so I use chicken broth. But since you made it vegetarian, we did vegetable broth. Vegetable broth. And actually, we added a little bit of lemon zest oh, to yes. kind of wake it up. Yeah. And then um, to this, we're going to add the hominy. Which do you want to try? Please? I'm like hominy. I've heard of. It's corn. It's just a type of I, corn. Okay, I've tasted that in restaurants before, but it's been probably in an enchilada, and I haven't. And seen then we it. need the black beans. Oh, that is so yummy. I oh, know, I always forget what hominy is. Hominy. <laughs> Not harmony. I won't start singing again. And then we're going to make the dressing with my jar. And you add jar. in your mason jars, because then they will save. And if you don't have grapeseed oil, you could use olive oil. Okay. It was just having fun. Well, I was going to say, what's special about grapeseed oil that you like? It's a little lighter. Okay. 
And then we're going to add the agave. I love agave. And if you don't have agave, you can use honey. You could. What is the big difference? Is there one? I don't know. And a little bit of apple cider vinegar. It's, you know what? I like agave better than honey. It's less, um, what am I trying to say? A little lemon juice. It's less strong. And a oh. tablespoon of cumin. Oh, we love the cumin. And, and again, cumin, I'm just cumin, 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 cumin. You I say don't know. cumin, I say cumin. Potato, potato. A little bit of salt and pepper. And again, you have cilantro on your plate. I do. I and we that. already have it chopped, so we can actually yeah. use what we already have. And, and a little these, bit of pepper. You always have the cutest gadgets and things. I mean, look at how cute that is for your pepper. I love it. It was even cuter when it was filled with M&Ms. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> well, and that's when you go places and get little hostess gifts. I never think. I'm like, M&Ms are gone. What am I going to use this for? But super fun. Yeah, and, and thankfully we each got one, so I have salt and yeah. pepper. <laughs> so um, we're going to throw in the dressing. I love that you use cumin. Yum. And these, mini, these are my favorite, the mini taco shells. And mix. And Again, so easy. Okay, mix. that hominy is yummy. And quinoa is actually a protein besides the beans. So says my sister-in-law. I just say, okay. But yeah, it's a... It's, it it's actually very high in fiber. Yeah. And which is good. We need. And I like that it's white. That's kind of fun. It's different. So now that we've done that, we'll maybe add a little bit more to the... A little bit more cilantro because I love it. Unlike your family, just for you. you. Won't, thank you. They won't put it on the table, but my son-in-law will eat it. So at least really? I have one person on my side now. You're like everyone get out of the house. I'm just going to feed the son-in-law. That's so funny. But no, yeah. I put it on a lot of stuff, but there, yeah, yeah, it's love hate. There's things that my husband will eat around. Cilantro is not one of them. Isn't that funny? I mean, I, I've discussed this with other chefs as well. Everyone's like, yeah. And you can take like a little piece like this and yeah. put it in something and he'll know. He has good taste buds. Well, <laughs> you, you know, spoiled him over the years with great food. So he, his taste buds are probably really on where I put so much hot sauce on everything. Yeah. We're not sure. My husband loves to blame everything of, about his size on me. I mean, he's not, <laughs> he's not huge. But when we first um, got married, he was, he still is 5'10", but he weighed 130 pounds. And um, he's more than that now. And when people ask him, you know, yeah. what did you do? Did you work out? And he said, she did it. <laughs> but 90% of what you cook is super healthy. And the it other is. 10 is not that bad for you. It is. So unfortunately, we have to slice one more avocado. Another avocado. That's why I just sit and watch you do it and go, oh, be careful. What's super cool about this one is we only need slices, so I can do it with half. Oh, see? <laughs> Now, do you put the slices on top once you make them? Yes. Assemble them? Mm -hmm. And it's just the mix, a little bit a little of bit slice of salsa. Of and some salsa. See, easy. Easy is so good because a lot of people, they work all day. They don't have time. Now, could you make both of these even the night before? We and have. Sit. Okay. It ac this actually tastes a little better if you make it and let it sit. It doesn't get soggy because the dressing is really light. Okay. And it tastes better. We sometimes will throw this on a piece of lettuce instead of a tortilla yeah. or we tried it in crispy taco shells didn't work really <laughs> it was, so it you was have to have it in soft yeah so you're just gonna put a little bit i've never used these before they're though. so cute i was super excited when i found it a little bit of salsa a little bit of salsa on the top they're so i mean how cool on a big plate to have them for see i'm an appetizer eater i like little things okay, should we put them on your yeah Let's do at least one more, because we each need one. Yes. Well, we can make a bunch I'm of I'm like, them. yes, please. You always have to say <laughs> please and thank you to the chef. Even if you don't like something, you have to say thank you, because you took the time. All right, well, I'm going to let you scoop a few more. I'm going to sit and watch the magic happen, and we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, the peach cobbler little mini muffins will be ready, and we're going to taste everything. So don't go anywhere. You're watching Community Cooking. Whether you need a hand shopping for groceries, using up scraps, or finishing every bite, Meal Prep Mate can help you plan better and save more. Whether you're a newbie getting your first taste, a meal prepper honing your chops, 
or a meal prep pro hungry for a challenge. You can learn how to eat smarter, plan better, and save more at every step of meal prep. When you finish every bite, you save. Start prepping with Meal Prep Mate at savethefood.com. Welcome back to Community Cooking. All right, Debbie, everything looks so great, but I'm starting dessert first. I'm Greek, That's not French, but oh my gosh. You drizzled some caramel. I have it all over and I don't care. <laughs> you don't though. <laughs> oh my word. The caramel sauce on top and it's light and refreshing. I'm even going to lick my fingers. <laughs> okay. The whipped cream and the caramel with everything. Okay. I'm going with some dip. I'm going to try this because I never get to have cilantro. <laughs> I know. You don't. I was like, would you please? Mmm. Okay. The cumin cumin makes that dish. It's and in, it's a it's dip. It's in that dish. <laughs> oh, it wasn't in this one? <laughs> oh, God. I don't know which one. What do I have in that one? It's you must yummy. be so excited about cilantro. I am so excited about cilantro. All right. I like the hominy. I can already tell. Okay, you're right. The humans in this yeah. one. I was like, what am I tasting? But that's so good. Oh, my gosh. No one's getting a bite of my cupcake or anything on my plate. <laughs> I'm messy, and I love it. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, you really are so great at this. I'll have you back anytime. Thank you. I had fun. I love it. Remember, we really do have some of the best chefs right here in our own community. On behalf of Debbie, myself, and the entire crew, thank you so much for watching, and we really hope you try these recipes at home. We'll see you next time on Community Cooking. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.